Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. Liverpool beat Crystal Palace by two goals to one yesterday in a game which I, I think it's safe to say they didn't really necessarily deserve to pick up the three points. But the most important thing is that Liverpool did get the win and there have been far too many times this season where we've said that Liverpool deserved to win and didn't get maximum points. You know, Everton at home, West Brom at home, Burnley at home, Newcastle away, both of the games against Sevilla in the Champions League as well. You know, this Liverpool side in previous years has had this massive habit of giving away points when they've actually played well enough to pick up all three. And it was so refreshing yesterday to see see a team that, as Jurgen Klopp said, won dirty. I mean, we say win ugly, but it, it's the same kind of thing. And yeah, it was just, it was a really mature performance for Liverpool in the end. I, I say mature, there were, there were moments where, you know, we really didn't play well and we really exposed ourselves and were very, very poor, particularly at the back. But they had the maturity to ride out all those errors and, and not lose their confidence despite the fact the game wasn't going their way. Because, you know, when Benteke misses those two chances and that's such a key moment in the game it could have been easy for Liverpool's heads to just completely drop and say look we're getting absolutely dominated here there's no way we're going to win this game but instead they thought okay we've got the luck there now we have to make it count at the other end and make it count Liverpool did so obviously the game didn't start off well at all Crystal Palace had already got through once already with Wilf Sahar very good save from Loris Karras to make himself big and divert the ball over the bar with his chest there and then not long after that Liverpool have a bit of a chance from a corner Palace go up the other end pull the exact same move that uh, Manchester United did with Lukaku onto Rashford this time it was Benteke onto Zaha and Trent Alexander-Arnold gets gets caught out again and I think some of the the blame kind of has to it duly falls on Alexander-Arnold and Joel Matip to be honest because you know Joel Matip should be alive to the fact that that is a weak point of Trent Alexander-Arnold and when you are, a, are a, not an aging professional but someone who's at a much higher level of their game someone who's got a lot more experience and you've got a 19 year old playing next to you you've got to be alive to the fact that they're making mistakes and you've got to be able to compensate for that. Joel Matip doesn't. Trent Alexander-Arnold makes the mistake again. Loris Karius tries his best to come out. You know, he makes himself big. He tries to stop the ball. As soon as it goes past him, he tries to stop himself from catching Zaha. Unfortunately, it is too late. So I don't really have any problems with Loris Karius for that. I think he, out of everyone, I think it was said on Twitter, actually reacts best to the situation. He's the only one that's alive to the fact Palace are trying out that move. And it's just the fact that his defenders let him down that stops him from actually making any sort of claim on that ball or anything like that so yeah really disappointing penalty to concede a big concern going forward because I think with the teams that we're playing later on this season the so-called smaller teams they're going to know that there is actually quite an easy way to get through Liverpool we've got this this soft underbelly and if you put the right players on the pitch and put them in the right places at the right time it's so easy to exploit that and so easy to get goals and without Joe Gomez we haven't really got a way around it at the moment so that that is a massive worry and obviously Liverpool go 1-0 down early on. It feels, it felt a lot, a lot at that point like it was going to be one of them games that we had an awful lot about five years ago. You know, under Roy Hodgson, still quite a lot under Kenny Dalglish and under Brendan Rodgers as well, where we went up against a team that we really should have beaten and just had a terrible terrible off day but like I said this Liverpool team when they don't play well they are still capable of winning games and I mean between then and the end of the first half it was all Liverpool we were piling on the pressure we weren't really getting anywhere I think the problem was the midfield just wasn't capable of really creating something and the attack as much as it tried you know Sadio Mane in particular he had an iffy game I think it's safe to say Jurgen Klopp said it wasn't a Sadio Mane day personally I actually quite like Mane when he's like that I mean even though you know disciplinary wise it was very questionable his performance and to be honest he should have been sent off I think the referee I, I don't think it's a yellow card for the first one because while it's not necessarily a penalty because the contact isn't huge and Mane goes down quite late at the end of the day all Mane's trying to do is show the referees that there's been contact there and there's no nothing really wrong with that at the end of the day you know if there's contact and contact is strictly speaking a potential penalty he's got to throw himself down theatrically otherwise the referee's never going to see it and I get the feeling that maybe that was the referee trying to compensate for a quite a harsh yellow card later on in the game with the lack of yellow card when Mane just just picks up the ball but yeah I do quite like Mane when he's like that when he's getting involved whether it's good or bad I think he's just that kind of player who's who's a little bit mad a little bit you know mercurial and it's just as long as he's getting involved as much as possible he's capable of making some sort of difference for Liverpool so I actually I was quite a fan of that Mane performance I think it was the right decision to take him off when Jurgen Klopp did because it 
you know, the crowd was getting onto him. It looked like the referee was thinking, you know, one more dodgy moment from Sadio Mane and he's gone. And he was a little bit a little bit too much of a live wire at that stage in the game. So I think Klopp makes the right decision there. Obviously, before Mane comes off, he scores a really, a really nice equaliser for Liverpool, to be honest. I thought it was very, very good hold-up play from Roberto Firmino. Really good stuff from James Milner, you know. He knows that everyone's expecting him to cut inside and either have a shot or try and loop a ball around to that back stick. Instead, he does what no one expects, uses his experience that he had at left-back and goes outside and plays in a brilliant ball to Sadio Mane. I thought James Milner was actually really, really good in the second half of that game. In the, I think, I don't know whether it's experience or the fact that he's been at Man City a while before he came to Liverpool and stuff like that, but he just seems to have a lot of quality in the ball when breaking down low blocks. You know, Genie Van Alden and Henderson were guilty of going a little bit missing in both the first and second halves, really. I don't think they've got that that sort of quality and that presence of mind in those kind of situations. And Milner's just got such a cool head in those moments. And I think that does come down to experience that even when he's in a packed box and there's not too many players around him, he's still capable of picking out the kind of passes that really, really cause problems for the opposition defence. So Milner did really well there. Great ball into Mane. Lovely finish from Mane. And like I said, good performance from Mane. Hopefully, you know, he can take that energy and aggression into the next few games and just maybe maybe dial it down a little bit, like I said, on the disciplinary front, because what we don't want at the moment is a Sadio Mane red card if he's going to start playing so well. Luckily, he avoided one yesterday and will not be out for the Merseyside derby. But yeah, Liverpool get back in the game at that point. Then Palace have their two Benteke chances. I thought we were... We were so sloppy in defence at points in that game, you know. When you see that even Virgil van Dijk is having dodgy touches, even when he's misplacing passes and giving the ball away to Crystal Palace, that's when you know that Liverpool are really, really struggling defensively. And like I said, we, we got off with it at the end of the day. Crystal Palace really probably should have had that game wrapped up in that second half after Liverpool equalised with the chances that they had, with the opportunities that fell to Christian Benteke. Thankfully, we finally saw the Christian Benteke that played for Liverpool right rather than the one that usually likes to play against us and usually likes to score absolutely monster goals against us. But yeah, Palace really should have had the game wrapped up there. Liverpool were so, so poor defensively. And like I said, we should have lost the game or at least dropped points. But like I said, the most important thing is that even in that situation, they said, OK, we've been given a chance here. We've got away with one. We've got to make it count at the other end and make it count we did. It was a great ball. I think it was Milner who put it into Andrew Robertson. Really good. Just stretched that Palace defence and put them all the way to one side. Andrew Robertson again passes it back to Salah. Stretches the defence again. You know, stop, stops their sort of... You know, when we play against low blocks, they like to be static. They like to be positional. They like to be ready to make those blocks and stop Liverpool from getting through. So when you start pulling them from side to side, that's what causes problems. And that's what ultimately leads to Mamadou Sacco falling over like he's had his shoelaces tied together. And Mo Salah, coolest man in the house. I mean, you know, we, we, we've given him so much credit for that goal. Everyone's talking about how cool it was, how, how brilliant it was that he takes that touch and sets himself and stuff like that. But even so... With the form that Mo Salah's in at the moment, that's just what you expect from him. I mean, when you see the goal that he scored against Porto, where he takes about four touches in a situation like that, the fact that he takes one touch to set himself before sending it into the net isn't really a surprise at all. So yeah, a wonderful, wonderful goal from Mo Salah. That's what's... That's what's so important for Liverpool in this game is that we've got those players who are capable of making the difference when we're up against it. We need players like Mo Salah if we're going to get over the line for top four. We need players like Mo Salah and Sadio Mane and Firmino as well if we are to progress in the Champions League and reach the final and maybe even win the tournament. And it's just so nice that Liverpool finally have those kind of talents in the team and obviously a manager who is capable of getting that kind of performance out of his players. So that is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, why not give it a like? If you're new around here as well, hit that subscribe button there. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter and I'll be back tomorrow for some build-up content for that massive Champions League tie against Manchester City on Wednesday night. Bye for now.